Today we're going to finish the super secret trap door in the off-grid treehouse. Ouch! Yeah, I learned my lessons slow, don't I? Lucky for you guys, I get to do this video twice. I shot the whole thing, got the whole thing done, and all of the audio was corrupted. So, I could do a voiceover, but to me, watching voiceovers are just unwatchable. So, we'll go back through it. So, if it's a little, seems a little bit disjointed, then uh, you'll understand why, but we'll take it from the top. So, what we're doing here is we need it to, to, to get this, figure, figure out a way to make this trap door uh, so it carries its own weight. Let's say, for example, we've got kids up here playing and there's other kids coming up and it's very uh, easy to picture one of the kids dropping this on someone else's head and braining them to death. We do not want that. That's not ideal. So we want to devise some sort of a system that will allow the door to come down gently. That will, It will hold itself in place. No matter where it's oriented, where it goes, it'll always, it'll always have some resistance on it. So it could stop here, here, or here, wherever. So what I propose to do, uh, I'll show you. I got the pieces together here, uh, some stuff I cobbled together from my junk drawer, and we'll uh, put it together, see if we can't make this thing work again. All right. Oh, so in the first video, there was so much suspense and drama. Was it gonna work? Now I know it's gonna work. Actually, it worked really good. Uh, a couple things here. We'll set that aside. So what I came up with is I've got this little roller deal right here. It was in my junk drawer. I don't know where that came from. I drilled some holes in it to receive these big lag bolts. So this here is really perfect because when we use it with this nice heavy cordage here, this is some cordage that left over from my rock climbing days, fits in that pulley very nice. It's a nice strong cord and that way we can put a weight on this and it can roll through here and then we don't have to worry about the the cordage being abraded or frayed or broken. So that will suffice just perfectly. So for the counterweight, the best thing I could come up with was an old Jeep brake rotor. Yeah, seemed to be about the perfect weight. An old Jeep brake rotor. So that will go in the wall and that will all come here clear very soon. And then finally, I want to share with you the forged handle. So a couple months back, uh, my subscriber Jacob Jones who is a up and coming amateur blacksmith, contacted me and said, I'd like to forge the handle for Jack's secret trap door for his tree house. And this is what he sent. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's got some square stock there. He's got the twists in it. It gets really nice. I just drilled the holes in there. So we'll receive the screws. I got these nice leg screws that will fit in there. And that will be a really nice addition that really goes with the heavy timber of the handle. So that's beautiful. That's just beautiful. All right. So Jacob's handle here is going to go on the bottom side. I think I had it figured just like this, right in the middle. Doesn't that look nice? And that will allow uh, the kids to grab it and pull it down because they'll be pulling against that weight and to lift it up. Um, just just really fits nice with that. Just It's perfect. It's just perfect, Jacob. It's just, just ideal for this. So I got these lag screws. And... So since I burnt up my old DeWalt, well actually it's still working, but it's limping around, burnt up my old DeWalt drill. Uh, my dad was over here the other day and he said, you know, you need to get one of those new Makita cordless drill impact driver sets, the lithium ion, the 3.0s. I haven't had these before. He's, he, every time I see him, he goes on and on about them, how good they are. And man, they are, fant <laughs> are fantastic. There's a deal on Amazon right now. I purchased these, I think they cost me, they were like around $229 for the set, and you got a bag, and you got <clears throat> you got the cordless drill, and the impact driver, and you got an extra battery, and the big batteries, the 3.0, I think that's amp hours. Man, these are fantastic. If you're in the market for a cordless drill, check that out. I'll put a link um, in the bottom of this video. I think it's probably a short-term thing, but man, these are just ferocious little drills. So nice. I used to use these impact. The regular ones, the, the ridges when I used to take part, Jeeps apart, we used to use them for that, but this is far superior. Yeah, and one of the best things you can do is what I do, have always done, is get one of these little 3 8 drive impact doohickeys here. You can get these at Lowe's or Home Depot anywhere. And it receives your 3 8 drive socket set. 
So you basically get a really nice drill driver. And if you don't have a compressor or an impact wrench, these little guys will do almost 500 foot pounds of torque. I mean, they're incredible. They'll twist these things right off. So great, great tool. But that handle looks nice there, doesn't it? I think that's a perfect addition. That just really, really sets it off nice. Just handmade, hand forged, just beautiful. Just beautiful, I think it's just great. All right, so with that out of the way, let's go to our pulley system. So when I was first laying this out and designing this door, what I was gonna do is I was gonna put this, one of these eye bolts in the door like this, you know, so it went through the hole and then came out the bottom, put a washer and a bolt on it and I was gonna hook the rope to the top of this here. And I thought, well, that's not necessary. We'll just run the rope directly through it. So I tied a knot in the bottom, a big hard knot, and drilled the hole as small as I could and still get the, the rope through it. And if I can get all these knots out of here, I'll show you. So what we'll do, more knots. What we'll do is run this cordage through the hole. Now the first hole I drill, drilled was right here. And I thought, you know, that I didn't think very much, didn't think for good enough, but if you look here and see, there was a couple problems with this. One, the weight, the brake drum wasn't heavy enough and this thing still slammed down really hard. It wouldn't support it. The two, having the hole right out here in the middle of the floor is not ideal because it's gonna be a real trip hazard. So I guessed and I drilled a second hole and I put the second one over here. And this made more sense. And I kind of got lucky with this because it just happened to be the perfect balance point for the weight that I'm using. <laughs> I would love to have been an engineer. I love all things engineering, but there's just one thing that kept me from it. The math. Yeah. If you don't aren't really good at math, you're not going to be a very good engineer. So there would be probably an equation that a smart engineer could figure out and just drill one hole. Not me, I am the drill a bunch of holes and hopefully one of them will work type of guy. And fortunately I only had to drill two holes. So there you go, got the big hard knot in there and that pulls through. So let's mount our pulley and then uh, all things will become very clear here in a moment. All right, so here's our trap door with our rope. Now the pulley, I'm gonna mount right here on the inside of this uh, framing cavity right there. Now the rope, We'll come up, go through there, and down and, and hold that weight. So we'll lag these in, lag this in with these four bolts, and that will hold that nice and secure. So I'll use our new handy dandy impact driver. This thing is a monster. Man, I don't know why I haven't got one of these lithium eye drill sets sooner. They are the business got light on it. A good light too, LED light. Powerful. Perfect. What's so nice about this particular pulley here is, well, one, it's easy to mount. It's got its own mounting bracket, but the uh, cord can't, it can't escape. It can't jump off the pulley and then some poor kid get brained. So that's a really accidental feature, but a very nice feature. Here's our counterweight, an old front Jeep brake rotor. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, so now all we have to do is we'll run our brake rotor through there the rope, through the brake rotor. And we'll get that up there as high as possible because it this is not probably not the ideal weight, but or the it's not the ideal thing to use as a weight, but it's what I have. And I want to get it up there as close as possible. Like that. And so I'll mark this. And I want to tie a knot right where my finger is. Nice big hard hard knot. So we'll come up a little bit. We'll put us a, a knot in here to, to test. We want this to be tight. We'll just do a hard knot here. To test uh, our distance. We'll 
Be a little stretch in this, not too much. All right, let's see what we got. I nearly forgot my Manly Manners. Manly Manners, we haven't done a Manly Manners for a while. So here we go. Don't rush out of the house in such a hurry that you haven't had time to kiss your wife goodbye. She will grieve over the omission all day long. Such a little thing, isn't it? Such a little thing. I'm gonna share a story with you. Um, I've shared it, well, I've shared it with lots of people. I don't know if I've ever shared it on the main channel, maybe on the Bible study, I don't remember. I have a friend who was a, uh, he was a big real estate tycoon, a really successful man, uh, lots of money. Uh, really, I um, uh, was doing well with his business. Important, big, important business guy, right? You get the picture. So, and a Christian, um, a Christian is definitely a Christian in progress. So one day he had a client uh, that had flown across several states, I think even in a private plane, to buy a very expensive piece of real estate. It was a big deal. It was a big, uh, a big transaction. So he met at uh, uh, my friend's place and uh, they were gonna, they got, he got in his car and they were, he was gonna go out and show him this, this country property. God spoke to him and said, uh, Jim, I want you to, uh, uh, I want you to uh, take that, fold that laundry, take that laundry down that your wife's put out there in the drying in the sun. I want you to put it in a basket, fold it, and I want you to take it into the house. And he said he had a real struggle with that. With, he had this important client in, the, in the, his car and he thought, you know, I'm, I'm too busy for this. I'm too busy to do such menial work. My wife, that's her job. That's not my job. It, it doesn't make any sense for me to stop what I'm doing and, and uh, waste this man's time and go fold that laundry. But he listened to God and he went ahead and did it. <laughs> he said it was really, a, it, was, it was a tough thing to do. It was one of the most difficult struggles in his life. Finally, he did it, he took the laundry down, folded it, took it inside, got back in the car, and this guy was just dumbfounded. He's like, why in the world would you choose this time to get out when I'm waiting on you, when I've flown all this way to see this property, to go out and fold that laundry? Are you kidding me? You know, I'm paraphrasing here. And Jim said, uh, <laughs> he said, well, God told me to. And that was the end of the conversation. This guy was not a Christian. Um, but long story short, that witness, that uh, uh, because Jim listened to God and to did that, uh, did that, it went against his will, that ultimately he was able to reach this man for Christ. And, and this man ended up giving his life uh, uh, and, and becoming a Christian because of that example. If Jim would have tried to think of something to try to convince this guy or to give him a tract or to thump on the Bible, Using his own wisdom and his own judgment, this guy, he would have, it would have never paid any attention to him. I, I'd be willing to guess. But God spoke to Jim and Jim listened. And so sometimes the things that God asks us to do, they don't make any sense. And, and we just think that it's crazy and we might even be embarrassed to do these things. But he has a way. He knows things. His ways are not our ways. And uh, I, I thought that was a, a, great, a great story. I don't know why I'm telling you that. It doesn't really have anything to do with our manly manners, but... Uh, Maybe it does. Maybe there's one of you out there that needed to hear that. I don't know. It's always good for me to hear it. I'm always encouraged by it. So we'll see you guys on the, on the next video.